Spanish on community. Um, Kelly's put, I did cringe a bit listening to the podcast this morning when they mentioned the mum lying about things being on sale. Don't tell your dad was a frequent line I heard from my mum when I was younger. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't tell your dad. Welcome to The Vault with Financial, a safe space where we talk all things life and money and no topics are off limits. None. 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 Okay, ready for the first TikTok? Yes, let's get into it. Okay. You are the bitch that is asking your fucking friends to go to Greece for your bachelorette. Knock it off. Knock it the fuck off, okay? Unless you are pegging for every fucking thing. You got the plane, you got the tickets, you got the Airbnb. With love to you, Rochelle, I don't want to go to Greece and have to take off time off of work and pay out of the asshole to go to your fucking bachelorette. (laughs) Yeah, Rochelle. (laughs) Rochelle. I feel like I've been Rochelle. I'm going to have, um, this is confession time. Go on. I feel like I'm... (laughs) <laughs> I think <laughs> any bride to be has a little bit of Rochelle in her. Really? I'm gonna, yeah, because it's, so, it's social media is to blame. Mm-hmm. Films are to blame. The bridesmaids, I'm looking at you. No. <laughs> the the concept of going on, of it being your wedding, it's your time to shine. And we all go to everyone else's and the minute it's yours, it's literally your time to shine. So any kind of like Pinterest board that you've ever had in your head or any like celebrity um, hem party that you've seen you want to replicate, like it's your time to shine. So I to- I feel, I see both sides on this. I have been Rochelle and I had the best hem party ever. Laura planned it with one of our other best friends and it was immense. It was incredible. We went down to Cornwall for like three nights in a mansion with a swimming pool. Like we had a themed Stunning. night every single night. It was very fun. I'll walk you through it. So <laughs> Friday, I, I topped out. This is my, like I peaked. I've never, I've never planned anything <laughs> since. And what was your 10th wedding anniversary recently? So um, Friday night, Irish night, because we liked Highland. And so we had, um, we, we had like, Baileys and Guinness and blow up leprechauns, fancy dress, yes. steak and ale pie, yeah. and then um, Saturday um, was New York, and we got cocktails, and it was like as if you're going out in New York, like what would you wear, and we had a disco hmm. and stuff, and then um, the and cheeseburgers and things, and then the Sunday was Mexico because they liked oh Mexico, God. and so it was, it was cool. all like tequila and wear like your summer outfits and stuff. It was really really Sombreros, good. Sombreros, tequila. Um, do you know what? It's funny when you say that it's our day. I think as girls, this starts at like prom. Yeah. She's like the prom dress. Like I need a dress and you know, I need to go and get a beautiful dress. And then maybe your or your 16th or your 18th or your 21st. There's these moments where you see like we're the center of attention. It's milestone moments. And I feel yeah. like your Hindu bachelorette on your wedding is the last one. Last true. What t- is gonna be? That's true. It's the last hurrah. The f- yeah. Usually. It's your chance. <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, unless you get married again. But even then, your second wedding, can you do, oh, I'm getting married again. Can you all come to Mexico for my bachelorette? Yeah. Like, I feel like people two. would be bold enough to do that, though. Yeah, yeah It's true. the thing to do. It's. Uh, do you think that, um, bright, like, once you get a little bit older, if you're the bridesmaid, you get the fear of dread, like you've got to plan another Hindu? I don't think I've ever planned a Hindu. Oh, I planned yours. <laughs> I didn't have a Hindu. <laughs> I had a... Um, Bridal shower. Yeah. Like a dinner. What's it, that? What's a dinner? Sophisticated Hindu. <laughs> it, no we really went for straws. Lunch. <laughs> we went for a lovely lunch. Was it Victor's? We yeah, yeah. To? We went nice. for a lovely lunch. It was amazing. It was lunch, drinks, home. That's what it should be. Yeah. Well, I mean, I saw a TikTok the other day as well and it was like, where has all of this come from? Like, I thought it was literally a night out. Like, your wedding's on the Saturday, the night's out, night out is on the Thursday. Yeah. Like, I think it used to be that back in the day. Our mum said her Hindu was um, a meal at the local, the village pub with her mother-in-law and auntie-in-law <laughs> to be, and, you know, like that was it. There wasn't like even a night out. It was yeah, just... What happened to yeah. the blow-up dolls and penis straws? Yeah. Why have we got all sophisticated on ourselves? Let's just bring it back down. <laughs> Let's just be humble. Uh, Airbnb. <laughs> me. Oh, but it, I like that... Um, We've talked about this on the pod before, actually, this this general issue of affordability and what's appropriate and what isn't. And yeah, you've just got to find your balance because you know what? Some of us sometimes do want that holiday that's not with children if you've got children mm. or that's like not with your partner. It's just you and some girls. And it, if it all aligns and the stars align and it's just like, this is what we want to do. But I think it's the bridezilla. Like, um, I'd like to... Oh, my God, who plans their own though? It's people that 
Rochelle. It's people that <laughs> it's people that want the grease hole, the grease bachelor, and then they go. But everyone can't come to that, so we're gonna do a drinks <gasps> in Another Manchester, one. and then we're gonna <laughs> the do home a bridal hen. shower. The home hen, yeah. Then for the like mother in law that you might that might not want to come on the night out, but you still want to celebrate with them. It's just got too much. Stop it, everyone. Just take a breath. But then you and I said it was the last hurrah. It's not. Do you know why? There's now gender reveals. Oh, and oh there's God, baby yeah. showers. Why are We're the why is this America. a thing? We need like, to stop. That it's the cons it's the it's social media. I would with my friendship group, I hope you're all listening right now. So this is the plan. Take notes. We're all going to get married in the same year and we're all going to go <laughs> <laughs> on a group trip um, and just have a really great time. That's fun. And none of you are the centre of attention. Exactly. It's not your day. It's shared. It's our day. Do you know oh. what, who, I feel, who I do feel sorry for? The friend that gets married last. Because once you've been a bride, you've ticked the box. You're like, I've done my hand do now. So mm. we're going to go on. We're going to like, I'm yeah. done. Whereas the poor person that's been on every single person's Hindu, she deserves the time to shine as well. She so does. when do you call it? When do you call it? it when do you call it? Because people that got married first have started to have kids, and they're know, like, then that's the excuse not to go on holiday. And but this bride's lucky because she will look back and think how stupid the, the old wedding. She were. can learn from everyone else's <laughs> mistakes. True. She's gonna have the best one. She's the smartest <laughs> bride. <laughs> that's a good TikTok. Look, that and, one. Um, Screw love, you, Rochelle. <laughs> love call her, daddy. I, can I just say that when, when, is it Alex Cooper? Yeah. When she gets married, she she's going to Greece. <laughs> However, <laughs> she's, she's flying. Her, yeah, she's True. got the plane. She's probably got her own plane. Or they're going on Kylie Air or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I've got a dilemma, which I think is going to get us a little bit riled up, maybe. Oh. So, my boyfriend has a get out fund. <laughs> I feel like this is going to silence us a little bit. Okay. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> it's been known. <laughs> so my boyfriend and I have been together for over eight years now. We own a house together and we talk very openly about money, which I'm really grateful for. Whilst we split bills 50-50, we aren't fully financially combined. <laughs> we split groceries and dining out. But practice our one person gets this time and one person gets it the next time policy. We tell each other when one of us comes into some extra cash or when one of us is short, the other is happy to help cover the expense. We're in a happy relationship. I never sensed any possessiveness or resentment over what's mine and what's yours. But last week, I found out he has a separate savings account, which he's never mentioned. A secret bank account with a nice cushion of money. I feel stunned, but it's hard to express what I'm feeling to him. I felt like everything was positive and we were slowly moving towards hitting our goals. He tried to explain that he wasn't keeping it hidden. This money was irrelevant to our life and our finances, but it was a last resort get out fund. Something he would only use if our relationship became toxic and he needs an escape route. <laughs> I was with him. I know you've not finished. I was on his side until he called it the get out fund. And I feel like this is all about semantics, like emergency fund. But if it goes toxic and if you turn out to be a lunatic, I can run away is probably not the right mm. badging of the naming of the account. I don't know what the pot's called in Starling, but we need a, we need a rename. Uh, go on. But that only made me feel worse, obviously. <laughs> like he's always had kind of had one foot out of the door. I don't know how to organise my feelings about this or how to talk to him about it further. <laughs> I mean, I, change the name. I know, yeah. First of all. <laughs> Aside from the name, I'm with him because... I want this if, are you shocked about this? Yeah. No, it's a fuck off fund. I know, and he's we've got one. Yeah, he's got she's one. just jealous that she's not thought of the same thing. <laughs> but what if... You, you, do that in a, you do that in a healthy relationship cool. though that like... Like, I've got like, one. Has, 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 <laughs> has everyone got a pot of money that they're like, in case we break up? No. No. Or no like, that's that's true. But I had access to it if I needed it. I have access to money if yeah. I needed it. Um, yeah. But it's the, so the big thing here for me genuinely is, I don't know how long they've been together, obviously, and she doesn't share she that. She said, no, she said. Eight years. Over oh, eight she years. Shows how much I was listening. It's not a comprehension <laughs> exercise. So, Eight years is actually quite a long time to be looking at. You don't have to get married. There's no rules about that, but about yeah. what money we do and don't have. And to have a get out fund when you've been together eight years is also a little mm. bit of a red flag because 
surely at that time it just turns into an emergency fund if we need yeah. it for anything. And and quite frankly, they've not fully combined their finances, but they're almost there. It's his anyway. So it's you know, it's there for him. So I think he's positioning it as a get, get out is not it's, helpful. It's the positioning. And True. you'd think after eight years, one thing I would say is you'd think after eight years that if they're so honest and open about money that it would be clear that he's got a fund, an emergency fund. And he fund. Would, should sh- surely encourage her to have one as well. Absolutely. Yes. So sh- yeah, that's is she a good just point. annoyed that she's not necessarily done the same thing? No, I think she's just more annoyed that he's got one and didn't tell her and it's in case they need to get out. But rela- we have to be sensible here. Relationships end. Relationships yes. end after eight weeks. Relationships end after eight years. Relationships end after years. 28 yeah. years. Like, Everybody should be thinking about this. Like, you're right, it's semantics. It's not that the fact that he's got one, it's just how it's positioned. So my advice to you, go and start building yourself one. Or talk about how you can have an emergency fund together that you both amicably split should anything happen. Yeah. Yeah. And talk to him how about how you feel. So are you annoyed he's got the money? Are you annoyed about how he's positioned it? It could be banter. It could be, I mean, oh, it's get out front, you know. And also like they're trying to hit their money goals. She might be thinking like, well, that could go to like that's got, that could sort our holiday. Yeah, next no, I, year. Underst- I understand that. But some couples are really funny about joining any sort of finances like that, aren't they? Yeah, sounds like they've got. It's a shame they've got a nice, healthy balance. That sounds like a very healthy, financially sound relationship. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the she doesn't say him I'm struggling. It. I can't afford. She yeah. says when one's struggling, the other one sorts it. And you know, fair like if if she's spending her excess money on stuff and he's got excess money to put in a bank account it's not his fault mm. like true you thought we were gonna go mad on this one didn't you but <laughs> i mean i think it is just the like call it an emergency fund the psycho susan like meme that he's got next to the <laughs> in case it went toxic oh yeah what's pictures on this on yeah, the, what's the picture what's the picture on the part freddie mercury <laughs> i want to break free like oh <laughs> good luck build your own okay sorry lucy okay it's Alex, like Lucy's fuming. She's like, I've got a friend. <laughs> got a friend. A friend? Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got a really nice community win to bring the tone up a little bit. Okay. The biggest win for me has been mindset change. I used to think I'll never be able to afford new kitchen, new car, etc. In reality, we absolutely could. I just didn't know until I started to budget. Now I feel like anything is possible. Obviously, it takes time to save up for things, but they are always possible. I don't have any stress anymore that I can't afford things. Yeah. That's the such mindset. a mindset shift, isn't it? Like the, people, We say I can't afford, but it is about slowly and steady it's the tortoise and not the hare you can afford these things but if you do it you know if you want everything at once most of us can't afford that in a paycheck that's a really good shift yeah I like that one I also feel like mindset shift is almost harder like you've Mm -hmm. got the numbers you know like when each you're gonna hit each goal like if you're organized and everything but like the mindset shift like is up to you yeah well it's like I can rather than I'm never gonna be able to years and years of learning bad habits from society from family members from social media and expect social expectations of what you should and shouldn't have to yeah to have a mindset shift of I'm on my own path and we can absolutely afford these things I've just got to maybe wait like delay gratification yeah true it's brilliant love that okay time for dilemma number two hey girls I have a burning question that I just can't figure out the answer to I'm not sure which way to go Is it a stupid idea to spend more than half of my paycheck on rent? I've always heard that you should try to spend under a third of your paycheck on rent. Surely this accounts for like all like housing bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mortgage mortgage payments and stuff. Um, I've always heard that you should try to spend under a third of your paycheck on rent. But with the state of the rental market right now, that just feels impossible. I've always shared my space with friends, but I really want to take the... I really want to finally take the plunge and live alone, but it would really stretch my budget. Everyone around me says it's not a wise decision and that I'll regret it. Is it a bad idea? Can I justify my rent being more than half of my income? This is so subjective. It it, it depends on so many things. There's no like cookie cutter answer to how much should I spend on rent or what percentage of my income should go to X, Y, and Z. Everyone's heard of like the 50, 30, 20 rule. That really doesn't apply. Money money is so personal. It's not a one size fits all. It's absolutely not. It's so personal. What you have to look at it and how it fits in your life. What can I afford? What can I afford if stuff goes wrong? Have I got an emergency fund? Should Because if it's just on you, having being a single person, we could talk about the single tax all the time, the pressure that that puts on you first of all mentally that should something go wrong, 
look left, look right. There's nobody there in the house to help you cover those bills. It's a big financial stress maybe to have more than 50% or up to 50% of your income going on where you live. I would say so. So the the way you need to look at this is... um, it being half your income is like, and your after tax income is, is is that figure, um, but it doesn't really give you much room to move with the rest of it because fixed expenses are going up for all of us, you know, with inflation. So things like your food bill and things like um, uh, electricity, energy bills, council tax, everything is going up for people. And so that 50% doesn't go as far as it used to, the other 50%. So then when we're talking about if you wanted to pay down debt, if you wanted to travel, if you wanted to Mm -hmm. invest, make sure that you put enough in your pension. So much to juggle. You really, really restrict yourself with with up to 50% of your income going on your rent. And that's not talking about rent going up. So I was just about to if say interest rates move, if your landlord puts the rent up because their interest interest rate's gone up, mm-hmm. that surely is like the, the absolute max. Whereas if you think about it, if you're coming closer to a 30% and then your rent went up, you might suddenly start nudging close to that 50, mm-hmm. but you, you started lower. So this does depend. If you are in a situation where you are in like a, a city, if you're living on your own, you know, you want to be safe and you don't want to live in a place where you feel unsafe. Those are all important things that I think are the only reasons it should go up. If you fancy a second bedroom and you don't absolutely have to have one, if you were quite like a balcony and you don't absolutely have to have one, if you want to move from an apartment to a house, but you don't have to have one and that all nudges you up to the 50%, you will really struggle to get ahead financially yeah. if you're doing it for like, I'm going to call it a bougie reason. Yeah. You yeah. Know, you've, you got, just... you've got nowhere to go with it. Like you said, you can't control the mic, the macro. No. So when things go up, you've literally got nowhere to go. You could cut your, your flexible expenses as much as possible, but life for living. Do you really want to live yeah. like that? No. If you, especially if you're living on your own, you need that social yeah. like interaction with people. So you're going to constantly say no to go out to dinner. You're going to constantly say no to holidays because you're a slave to your rent. Yeah. But again, this is ge- geographically like we're quite lucky in the north like speaking to some of our community members in london and the south they really struggle to make that 50 percent work it, because of the macro it's not that they're deciding yeah. i want a bougie balcony the math just does not work yeah you, you, you know we've seen the battles trying to get rent places you're splitting rent with people you're traveling further in i think having a little look at what your income trajectory could be is helpful as well so you may be you know say if you're in like a trainee profession where you know in one year i'm definitely going up yeah. another x you know there's just just have a look on that I, I think it's easy to get giddy and carried away with right move and some something that's probably pushy oh i can afford it i can afford it but actually it's okay well what are your financial goals what emergency funds do you have? What trips and you what's know, plans? your lifestyle like? Are you going to completely go straight back on your whole lifestyle for I the know. sake of it? Be realistic about it. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, whenever I look, I'm looking to move, like obviously just renting at the minute. Is this you as well? Yeah. yeah. Very. <laughs> Another friend also says this is therapy. Uh, um, I always, <laughs> I always add like. 200 extra extra pounds onto yeah. the rent in my brain. Yeah. And I'm like, it's going to go up. That's a good that. idea. Ooh, I like that. Like, like a little in a year's in. time, like yeah. that's, that's, that's what it will be. The dear, what about you? So you live on your own as well. And as you're looking at places to be, how, how are you working out? What makes you feel comfortable in terms of what you can spend on mortgage or rent? So I'm hoping to buy a flat soon because... I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's just money down the drain with renting and stuff. But like, it is a lot of freedom. Like, um, I've not, I've only lived on my own for a few months, but, and it's, it's been hard and it's like way over half of my paycheck's gone on rent, but like, it's only temporary. Yeah. Um, Everyone loves that saying, don't they? Money down the drains. I have rent. Really, rent is not money down the drain. Oh, it's like financially. For a of time. Yeah, like whatever. It's a bad decision. Well, is it's not it big, though? Oh, yeah. you're, not, like, you're not investing in anything, are you? But it's a very I'm British also, thing. Like if it wasn't for renting, like I'd still live at home. I probably wouldn't have bought, bought somewhere. I'm not even thinking about buying anywhere right now because I don't know where I want to live. Yeah. And like everyone says it's dead money or whatever, but... I'm getting something back in return for that. It might not be financial. Yeah, whatever. But also like, if something goes wrong, like the estate agent just takes care of it. 
Like, exactly, I'm not paying for a boiler, like, like on the roof or something. I'm not you paying for a South Wales. Boiler. Can you just come yeah. <laughs> to Liverpool because the tap's not working? <laughs> yeah, people that rent get a really bad rep. As in, yeah. there's a rumor going around that it's dead money and then it's and it's silly to do so. But I, I, it is. It's but very... this, this comes back to the percentage point. So if you are spending more than you need to on rent and that's a needs basis so if if you're overspending but you've loads of options to have cut back and gone a bit little bit so that you can save in the background you can invest in the background then questionable maybe it's dead money but also for a period of time it may not be right to buy and so it's just buying patience it's buying a safe home i'm exactly. like in a good place i can put myself into work my earning trajectory can go up and some, but the first house I bought, I did rush into. I got a really rubbish interest rate. Dealing with, didn't really have anyone guiding me um, back then. I just cracked on with it and rushed ahead. And in the first like two years, I had that. The the I may as well have rented because the amount of money I paid per month in interest to the bank, I looked, got my mortgage statement through, and I was like this is a con, like I've not paid anything off it. I'd effectively rented. And so it helped reinforce to me when I speak to other people about it going, mm, we, you know, we, we love owning our own thing. It is a really big step and it's a lovely step. And it's a lovely journey. And I think everyone should, if you want to go on that homeowner journey, it's exciting. Yeah. But yeah, we, we're not going to put shade on people that rent because... I always remember when you told me about interest on a house. <laughs> and I showed you that, oh, listen, this yeah. much of my payment actually knocks off yeah. the debt. And yeah, this sometimes and it's not like it's cracked up to me. It's expensive. It's stressful. It's all on you. And also, like you say, it's yeah. worth considering if you're trying to jump into a to buying a property to rent first, especially in a relationship as well. You just don't know what's going to go wrong. It's really tough to get out of a house situation. And flexibility of where you want yeah. to be. Like you said, you can kind of hop around and rent a little bit. And if you kind of know where you want to be and this feels good, it's a great next step, especially if everything can line up financially, but not rushing is a great thing as well. Okay. I'm going to close the vault. So any final words? I'm rubbish at final words, Lucy. No, you don't. You don't want a summary from us. I think said enough. <laughs> this may, we may need to. Uh, oh my god, we need like uh, like a Chinese proverb each to like <laughs> yeah. fortune cook, get the fortune cookie out. Fortune Lucy, you should pull out a gun when you say that. Like <laughs> final words. <laughs> oh, so no final no, words. No. <laughs> <laughs> Those were them. Final words or oh, final words? Okay. Um, if you would like to send your dilemmas, please email them to the vault at financial.com and the vault is now closed. I don't know what kind of vault this is, but I'd go to do that every time. Um, just a quick disclaimer, the vault is just a chat around life and money topics and we are not giving financial advice.